Hi, it's a lipstick gal. Thanks so much for watching today. I wanted to talk about my most repurchased makeup items and the products that I love so much in one shade. I had to get another. Let's jump in. I think the first thing, <laughs> there's a whole playlist, um, but this is a good place to start right here. And there's one more. So those are all of my Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. They're so good. There's three different formulas. My probably most used during this time of year when it's warmer outside is a luxuriously lucent. They are just the most beautiful, comfortable, lightweight, creamy, hydrating lipsticks. In the winter time, I am a sucker for the velvet lipsticks, those matte lipsticks, another one of my favorite formulas. Here's the velvet formula. Here is the luxuriously lucent formula. One tends to be a little bit more lightweight, a little bit sheer, more hydrating. Not that the matte ones are drying, but they don't have that same amount of um, hydration and slip to them. They both feel really good on the lips. They're fantastic. The Insanely Saturated, I feel like all of Lisa's lipsticks have a ton of pigment to them, but the Insanely Saturated formula is more of a demi-matte. I have all three formulas, love them all. I have, what is it, 33 of the lipsticks. I think there might be like five or six shades that Lisa makes that I don't have but I'm obsessed. Like if you had to say you can get rid of all lipsticks but one from one brand, I'd say I'm keeping my Lisa Eldridge, you can have the rest. And for somebody who is a lipstick addict, that says a lot. Another product I absolutely fell head over heels for and have continued to repurchase even though they are so expensive are these guys. These are the Lisa Eldridge lip liners. These are the best. I mean like look how short and tiny they get. I love these. Um, these are the lip liner I reach for when I want to make sure nothing goes anywhere and I get all day wear. These dry down and will not budge. They also, you know, I've had like this little tiny guy here I've had for a couple of years, but it's still creamy because the seal on the cap is so good. Once this sets, I'll be able to like really rub with force over it. It's not going anywhere. So if you line and fill your lips with one of these, color all day long. Fantastic. Um, they started out at $25. Last I looked, they were $27. They could be more than that now. I don't know, but I have four and I'm going to repurchase like when this little guy here gets to be too short to sharpen, I'm getting me another one. I have my favorite red from Lisa in velvet. I have um, the Muse lip liner and then I have two mauve tones, one in blush and one in beauty. These are just fanta fantastic lip liners. Like, really expensive, but I feel like if I'm spending my dollars, this is where I'm willing to put it because I know they're not going anywhere. Love. I'm on a lip roll. Let's keep talking about things that I love that I have repurchased multiple times. I know there's another one of these somewhere. These are the Wayne Goss lip liners. This is a very different formula. This formula is a little bit harder. It's not quite as soft and gel-like as the ones from Lisa. This reminds me of a more traditional lip pencil. But what I love about these, first of all, the shades. The shades are so good. They're not too bright. They're not too pink. They're not too much. But I love that I can really carve out like my lips exactly where I want them if I want to fill them in. I'm, I'm wearing one of these today. I reach for them incessantly, incessantly. I love these, but they're a very different type of lip liner. They're good at keeping things in the borders of my lips. They're good at kind of fine tuning the edge of my lips where my lip line's a little wonky the more volume I lose in my lips. That's what I love about a lip liner in general. Lisa's are a little creamier and glide a little bit easier. These are hair drier but there's something about this formula. They're super easy to sharpen like as sharp as you want them. Easy 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 but then beyond that they wear really well. They're they're not as long lasting as Lisa's but they're easy to reapply and I think for me it's the color like the nuance of colors that I have. Um, and I, I know there's, I can't find it right now, but there's a fifth one and I have one in a box, like one that I don't want to be without that I have a bonus. So I have six of these in my collection. They're just really good. All right. Other lip products. I love Charlotte Tilbury's lipstick formula. I've got a lot of them. I even have some of the ones that are in the refillable tubes. This is the matte lipstick formula that made me realize I could wear a matte lip. Because for the longest time I thought matte lipsticks just weren't for me because I was trying the wrong ones. Ones from the drugstore that dried my lips out or like the retro mattes from MAC that like turned my mouth into like a desert wasteland. 
But when I tried one of the Matte Revolution lipsticks, that's why I have so many of them. I think these are all Matte Revolution ones right here. They're just so good. This is one of them in Am I Kiss. It used to be called Bond Girl, but it's called Am I Kiss now. So it is a beautiful matte formula, but I like that it has some slip and glide. Up, up until I discovered the Matte Revolution formula, every time I put on a matte lipstick, it was like er, catching and pulling and tugging or skipping across and I would have like gaps because it was so dry. I couldn't, these glide. These glide, they're creamy, they're comfortable. They don't dry my lips out. They're so, so good. Um, are there other formulas I like just as much as this? Yeah, I like the Lisa Eldridge mats, but I, I'll tell you before I discovered Lisa, I was a diehard Charlotte Tilbury fan because this formula is really good. I still continue to buy Charlotte lipsticks, not as much as I do with Lisa Eldridge. I don't have as large a collection, but the first one I got made me go, yes, I need more of these. So I'm trying to get this, I'm trying to get the swatches off and I've been scrubbing this one for a while. It takes a lot of effort. Those Lisa Eldridge liners are no joke. I've been a long time YSL lipstick lover and it all started with these guys here. These are the Rouge Volupte Shine. This, where is it? This one right here, this is uh, Rouge Tuxedo. It's number 45, it's a red. <gasps> Juicy, sheer, glossy, beautiful, comfortable. I loved this so much. I continued to repurchase these. And this I think is my third tube of this. I love red lipstick, but I have so many. I can't tell you how much effort it takes, like committed love of one product to go through three tubes of the same lipstick. Last fall, I fell in love with this. This is the new, the bold formula. For years, I used to wear their original cream formula. I forget what it's called, but it comes in a gold tube. Beautiful, fantastic. And then I discovered these guys. <gasps> I started out with this. This is shade number one. That is one swipe. When they talk about these being bold pigment, they were so good. I just picked up two new ones um, and they just came this week. So this one here is 1968 and this one here is shade number 10. So I think one is brazen nude and the other one is nude. I, yeah, this is nude style, this is brazen nude but the pigment is so good. They're comfy, they're creamy. They don't bleed outside my lip lines. Even if I don't wear them with a lip liner, love this formula. And I, I felt like, even though I like the original one that came in the all gold tubes, I had a couple of those, they were nice, and I, I wore them. I'm not saying they're not good, but this formula, the pigment, it lasts so well, it's creamy. Um, it doesn't dry my lips out, but the pigment lasts. Love, 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 enough that I was like, two more please. Here's where I'm gonna tell you, I already have it planned to make another purchase of another one of these Merit lipsticks. I have three shades, I love these. This is a signature lightweight lipstick. I feel like this is one of the most comfortable cream lipstick formulas out there. I started out with this shade Baby and I got this last spring on a whim and it is the most beautiful, cool leaning, pinky nude. It's exactly what I want on my lips. I loved it so much. I decided to do, you know what? I want to discover more about Merit. So I did a full face of Merit. I bought like everything they made at the time and I've continued to pick up almost everything that they release. Um, here is another shade that I love so much. This one's called Cabo. And the other one I have is in the shade Lavenue. Um, the one that I'm planning on picking up was a limited edition shade they put out at Christmas time. It was a red, because they don't have like a red. The closest they get right now is this kind of warm terracotta-y shade, this orangey shade called Cabo. I think they have Tiger as well, but it's also kind of like more of a an orangey red, maybe more orange than red. They didn't have like a red red. And at Christmas, they put out this red lipstick. And I just got an email last week saying, we're releasing this shade into our collection and I think they're releasing it sometime this week. So it's already like scheduled in my calendar, like an alarm to go off, to go to the Merit website and to pick them up. If you love a cream lipstick that is comfortable, and I feel like I can reapply all of these Merit lipsticks without needing a mirror. Like, yeah, a mirror's gonna help you, but I don't feel like I'm, they're so pigmented that if they accidentally get outside my lip line, it's the end of the world. Favorite thing about these Merit lipsticks is that they feel like nearly nothing on the lips. 
super comfortable. Um, they also have not too much pigment, but just enough. They're not like really heavy where you can't see any of your natural lip color. So keep that in mind. Um, if you like a little bit of your natural lip color to show through, I mean, you can, you can build them up, but like one swipe and you'll see a little bit of your natural lip color will be like a sheer layer over the top, but they're so good. Like that, that one in baby, I used that one like chapstick all last spring. It was just like reapply, reapply, reapply. I kept it in my pocket at work. I couldn't stop reaching for it. It was that good. Still love it. Love it enough that when I knew they were coming out with a shade, I would love them like it's on my list. Definitely, definitely gonna purchase. You know I love these glosses from Beauty Pie. These are the Wonder Gloss Collagen Lip Oils. I was gonna say plumping. There's not plumping in the name. But these are the lip glosses. I've, I was never, before 2020, when I tried this brand for the first time and I got one of these lip glosses for the first time, I was not a lip gloss person. And I feel like this gloss being so good and so nourishing and so juicy is what kind of pulled me in. And I go through them like crazy. Okay, these guys, I haven't had open that long and like we're, we're making headway. They're gonna be like this pretty soon. I love these. I did pick up the new summer shades. So these are still like brand spanking new. But what I love to do with these because I wanna get every single ounce out of here, I take the stoppers out and then I scrape all the way to the bottom. I get everything out that I can. Um, this one here, I'm not quite to the point where I've taken the stopper out, but I'm about to because like she's empty. But these are now $14 a piece. When I started buying these, they were just over seven. And that was in the summer of 2020. They were, and this is when Beauty Pie was doing that thing where depending on ingredients that you may have like five of their lip glosses in stock, but they'd all be a slightly different price. One would be 714, one would be 729, one would be 789, based on the materials it takes to make the one. Guess what, they're all $14 now. <laughs> I don't know what happened, things are a little different at Beauty Pie and inflation is making everything go up in price. And I was kind of bummed when I, saw, I bought the new um, summer set, I had the trio, I guess it's these guys here, and um, this is last year's, but I have a full one of these. I bought these in late May and they were $12 a piece. And by the time I received it and recorded the video, they'd gone up another $2 each. And instead of selling the set, like the trio of lipsticks for $30, you could only buy them individually for 14. Man, I don't know what it is, but I told myself at that point, I'm, I'm bummed that prices are going up, but this is one of those products that I've gone through so many, so many, so many tubes. I couldn't tell you how many tubes um, that I'm just gonna keep repurchasing. I feel like once I stop thinking of these as affordable beauty and start thinking of them as necessary, it's the gloss I wear the most. It's the gloss, I, I don't know how many tubes of these I've thrown away. There are other lip glosses in my collection that have been here for a couple of years and have never reached the bottom of the tube. And I've probably gone through 12, like another two here, maybe at this point 14. Like I finish and repurchase, finish and repurchase, finish and repurchase. These are really good. They're the type of lip gloss I like to wear, which is sheer, which is glossy, but not stringy. It's not so heavy, it settles into the corners and you get kind of like those puddles in the corners. It doesn't stick to itself and string and pull. It actually nourishes your lips. It's not just a shiny layer. It actually imparts moisture and hydration into your lip. The colors are wearable. They're, they're, it's, it's my perfect gloss. And I've gone through more than a dozen tubes. So, so good. And for somebody who has as much lip product as I have to go through more than a dozen tubes in three years, that's a lot. But it's all, it's just the formula. Immaculate. Last lip product I'm going to talk about are these guys. I, there's another one somewhere in this house and I, I don't know where it is right now. But these are the soft spoken velvet lip creams from M Cosmetics. Initially, they sent me these two. They asked, they reached out to me and said, would you like to try anything from our line? And I have been a long time fan of M. A lot of their products turn into like my daily reach for. Like I love their mascara, I love their brow products. Um, I, I love so much of what they do. Eyeshadow, blush, like you name it, I have it. I love it. But when they reformulated their Infinite Lip Clouds into this, the formula is so, so good. I love the shape of the doe foot applicator. It's a little bit curved. They say that they developed it to be like a finger. And it's the formula is exactly what I want. 
it is creamy, it is hydrating, it is blurring. And that, that name, you know, the soft in the name, it really is. Now, the, my one criticism is I feel like I have three of their nude shades and these two like this one looks more rose this one looks more brown but on the lips they all kind of look the same and i don't know where the other shade is right now so here's the one that's supposed to be more rose they just look like like a slightly deeper version of this kind of terracotta shade the only one for me that really is like different different um i have a lighter shade than these two nudes and it does kind of the same thing pulls a little orange and it might be my undertone but um, this one here in Flutter is kind of like their bright pinky strawberry shade. And this one is beautiful. And you best believe I've used these on the cheeks too. Like on a day when I'm like sunglasses and I need a little lip color, I'll pull one of these out. I'm like, oh, my cheeks look really bare. I'll tap my fingers here and tap it on here. It works well that way. I do that with a lot of lip products. But this is one of those few liquid lip products that because it doesn't dry down to that immovable, impervious state, love these super comfortable super nourishing and i've got four of them like i had two they sent me two and i was like so good i need more i need more also head over heels for their so soft cheek products blushes as well as their bronzers i've got two of these i can't tell you any other brand powder cream liquid or anything where i have two shades of bronzer i'm usually fair enough that i only get like one shade and it's usually the lightest. And I do have that. I have the shade Summer. I also picked up Tara because it's cool leaning and I use it kind of like a contour stick. Love that. But I love this formula of blush so much. I recently picked up two, two more. I love these. I love these. They're super easy for me to blend. Um, they come in a variety of shades. They're just stunning. This is the shade Bitten, Venetian Rose, Demure, and Lychee. My favorite thing about these is just like with no effort at all, they blend to like beautifully, beautifully. You know, you can just boop, 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 no effort. They're so good. I like using them with a brush. I like using my fingers with them. They're, they're just, they're so good. So good. I've heard some people say they don't work well for them. I, I don't understand that. They work beautifully for me. I like this formula so much. I have six of these sticks. I mean, that's really rare for me. I love them so much. If cream blush is not for you, might I suggest these? These are the Heaven's Glow Baked Blushes from M. Oh my goodness, they're so good. They've got a little bit of radiance built into them. You can see it in the pan. Um, probably the one that I've used the most is the one that I've had the longest. And this one is called Magic Hour, but it's not domed anymore. I've had it for so long, like it's getting to be flat, but it has a little bit of uh, reflect in it it's not highlighty. It's not, it's like a glowy blush. I know there's a lot of people doing glowy blushes. This formula has been around for such a long time and I have five shades. I think I have all the shades that they make that would work for my skin tone. There are other shades that if I were to have them, they would be maybe a color reference, but I'm trying not to just have everything. I'm trying to have what I'm going to use. And I started out with one, loved it so much. I got another. And then after that, it was just like, you know, avalanche, just picking up speed and collecting more shades as we go along. I love this. Another M product that I love so much, I started out with one. I ended up with, like, I have all the shades that I love. I started out with the one in Magic Hour. I love this product because I, I like a smaller palette. You get three mattes and you get three metallics. I feel like the metallics are really nice. The mattes are really buttery. And depending on what shade you like, if you want something that's a little bit more rose toned, their Venetian rose is really pretty. I love a neutral. Magic Hour is a little bit peachier, but I love a nude eyeshadow. So I picked up these two. This one right here is in Rodin and this one here is in Da Vinci. They're beautiful, absolutely stunning. I love this formula and there, there were like entire like chunks of the year where all I wore was this. I think when I first got this was it 2021, all I wore was this. Like it's one of those things where I fall in love with the product from M and I just reach for it over and over. They make so many products that are my daily. Well, if we're talking about beloved eyeshadow products, I could not do this video without mentioning my love for Viseart. <laughs> okay, they're, they're all gonna come sliding towards you. But I've had a lot of Viseart palettes in the past. I started out with this one here. This is the Natural Mattes 01. And I liked it and it was useful and I've had it for years. And 
it's fantastic. You can see mine has been through the mill. You know, one of my shades cracked and broke. I use this one as liner. This one I can use in my eyebrows. I use these shades here a lot. But because it's not a real, and forgive the term, sexy eyeshadow palette, I was like, okay, she's a workhorse, she's great, but I think this was kind of made more for makeup artists, like working makeup artists. I did pick up a shimmer palette, one of their 12 pans. This one here is the Sultry Muse, which is a beautiful palette. These guys retail for $80, but I was hoping to be bowled over by the shimmers in here, and I think their formula has changed. I could be wrong, this didn't blow me over, and then I got my hands on the pedophores. The original pedophores, like this little stack here, I started out with two, the Praline and uh, the Lilas, and these have been probably some of my most used eyeshadow palettes. I've got a cool option here and a warm option here, and I love that the packaging is so minimal and so easy. My other favorite thing about Viseart is that all of their eyeshadows are in their pans magnetically, so you can swap them out. If you have a magnetic palette, pull a few shades out, create your own new one, love, love, love. But the metallics in here, especially this one, surprised me so much. I was like, wait, this is not what I remember from the Sultry Muse. So then I bought a few more. I bought these two, which were like the other ones from this Pedophore series, like the metallics in here, they're so pretty. And then every year they released Pedophores, I got new ones. I got the, um, the ones based on the Roaring Twenties, love these. I got last year's Spring Collection, the macarons, the, those were nice. And then this last holiday, instead of doing four, they only did three, but I picked up all three of them and have been loving them. I love these little mini palettes so much. First of all, love me a quad. It's just the perfect number of eyeshadows, but the mixture of like these gorgeous metallics and really easy to blend neutrals is fantastic. So I really fell in love with this brand and then I just continued to pick up more palettes. You know, some of these that are the Entendu size, I do have this smaller one here, the Paris Edit. I do have a couple of these eight pans here. I really feel like, Vizier recently had a sale and I was looking at everything that they had on sale. Everything was on sale, like up to 40% off. And I was like, is there anything I need? And the truth is, I obviously don't need more eyeshadow, <laughs> but I was looking, is there anything that has come out that I've had my eye on? And the truth is I'm trying to get myself to the point where I'm not purchasing just to purchase. I don't want to buy something because it's new to swatch it for you and then never use it again. I want to buy things that will actually be used. I want to buy things and let them into my collection that are actually well suited for my makeup aesthetic, things that I like to wear, things that I really love. So I know I love this formula, but as I was looking through on their sale page during their spring sales, like, you know what? I have everything that I want. Like some of these other ones might be fun, but there's like half the palette. I wouldn't use these shades. Maybe they're a little too warm leaning. That's not what I'm preferring right now. Maybe they're a little too dark with my fair skin. It might look like I got punched in the eye because I do not have the best blending skills. Um, I do okay, but with like light eyeshadows, I do pretty good, but the minute they get too dark, it can get a little ugly. So I have to be really, really careful. And I realized, although everything's on sale, I have everything that I want. But do I recommend Viseart? Oh yes. And did one or two little palettes like lead me down the Viseart rabbit hole? Oh yes. And these pedophores, anytime they come out with one, your girl's getting them. All right, let's talk about some more eyeshadow that the minute I tried it, I had to have more. And I, I didn't think I had this many until I pulled them out. Look, I have five Wayne Goss eyeshadow palettes. Man, these are so good. I feel like maybe there's a little hit and miss because some people say that some are better than others. I love these and every single one that I have, I love so much. My, my favorite, favorite one is this one here. This one's called Pearl. I think a lot of it is because these are much lighter shades and being a fair girl, these suit my skin tone so perfectly. I reach for this and every time I reach for it, people are like, what are you wearing on your eyes? It's so pretty. It's so pretty just enough and not too much. So if I ever pull this out, I will incorporate a little bit of this shade right here on my cheeks, love. But I, let me show you all the ones I have. Here's Smoky Quartz. Uh, I like that we have a cool toned option. I think out of all of them, this one gives me a little bit more trouble. I feel like the other ones work like with no effort at all. That one I have to work a little bit harder on and it could be because it has a little bit of violet tones. Here's Amber, love this one. I didn't think I was going to and when I got it, I was like, wait, what? And this shade right here, 
stunning. And the tourmaline palette. Oh my goodness, so good. Another one that's a cooler toned option. Um, the one in Smoky Quartz has a few more mattes to it, but I love Wayne's formula. I love how big the pans are. I love that we have a celestial topper shade in every single one. Love these. Wayne comes out with more shades. Chances are I'm picking one up. I love these liquid lyrics from Lisa Eldridge. Oh my goodness. My most reached for shade is this one right here. Look at that. I can't tell you out of any other liquid eyeshadow that I've used almost half of it. This is the shade Bianca. It's stunning. Another one that I love, I wore it yesterday, is this one right here. This one is called Emily. This is another really interesting shade. This is more of an olive shade called Anais. Like I love these so much. Out of all of these, this is the only one that I struggle with a little bit. This is the shade Viola. And this came out, was it this last fall? It's a pretty shade. It's so pretty like this but I struggle because I usually like to blend these out. I find that it gets a little bit patchy on me and I cannot get it to look like this on my eye because if I can get it to look like this on my eye, I'd wear it nonstop. All of the rest of them are remarkable. Here's one that I love so much. It's a kind of a cool leaning brown. I mean, look, 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 the sparkle, the sparkle alone just makes it absolutely stunning. Here's another one that I absolutely love. This one is called Titania. It's got a really beautiful old gold look to it. I use these all the time. On the days that I'm feeling like I'm really lazy, but I don't wanna look like I'm doing a lazy look, I'll reach for one of these, um, spread it all over the eye. Uh, sometimes I'll take a darker shade like this one in Zoya and I'll use a very small eyeliner brush and I will give myself a winged liner with it. Sometimes like this one here in um, Bianca, the one that I have used the most and is like my favorite shade, this is a one and done eyeshadow look that makes it look like you spent so long on your eye. But it's, it's just, you know, cool tone sparkle and a slight kind of soft pink shell shade. So gorgeous. If you have not tried these and you love an easy one and done look, that's what these are. I mean, you could definitely mix them. You could use them over top of a powder shadow. But when I tried them initially, I fell in love with them so much. This is the first liquid eyeshadow that I was like, maybe liquid eyeshadow is not a joke because I would try the ones from Stila, the, the glitter and glow or the glisten and glow. <laughs> I look terrible. I would try a whole bunch of other ones. Liquid eyeshadow I was sure was not for me until I tried this formula and now addicted, addicted. And I, this is saying a lot, I like Lisa's eyeshadow palettes and I have all five of them, but I didn't want to pull them out for this video because although they're good, I don't have the same level of love that I have for these. Like I'll probably pick more up if she comes out with more shades, but I feel like these just have, there's there's something easy and craveable for my makeup aesthetic. I need to have these. I want more, more shades. Yes, please. These are fantastic. I love a cream blush and these super cheap cream blushes from Beauty Pie are stellar. I used to have five of them, um, but I only have four right now because last summer my mom was visiting and she was like, oh, I'm looking for the right shade of blush. Let's go swatch some. And she fell in love with the one in Sexy Berry and she, she's like, can I have it? I'm like, take it, take it. Um, my mom doesn't love makeup the way I do. If she ever falls in love with anything in my collection, I just let her have it. Um, but this is a new formula for this year. This is a, uh, look, a radiant highlighty blush. This is the shade Gleam Me Up. This is part of their new summer collection. But my favorite and most reached for shade is this one here in French Raspberry. This is one of those, it looks intimidating, but once you start to blend it out, this gives you that just left this ski lift look, kind of like that, you know, really kind of like in from the cold blush. This is the shade French Raspberry, it's stunning. I love these. They wear beautifully, they blend with no effort. My favorite way to blend them is to take a synthetic brush like this, dip it in the pot, a little bit on the back of my hand and then take it to my cheek. I find that with any liquid or any cream blush formula, if I don't do that, I end up looking like a clown. And I'm, I'm always trying to look blushed, but not too blushed. Even though I was, you know, growing up in the 80s and the 80s blush like really high and draped and really bold, I'm reminding myself that yes, I'm an 80s girl, but that's not the vibe always. I love these. And by the way, if you didn't know, these make a really great lip product as well. They're comfortable. They don't last like forever on the lips, but they're so easy to reapply. So if you like a monochromatic look, lips and cheeks, these are fantastic. We couldn't do a video like this without talking about Sydney Grace eyeshadows. 
I love Sydney Grace eyeshadows. This is the one I'm wearing today. This is California Coast. Oh, she's so lovely. So, so lovely. But my favorite thing about Sydney Grace is how easy and blendable. And if you want a really bold look, you can get it. But look at these metallics. They are stunning, stunning, stunning. You can have them really light. I have them on the eye a little bit lighter today. You can build them up. I don't get a lot of fallout from these. They stay on the eye. I don't need to use an eyeshadow primer, but I don't have particularly oily eyelids. I find that I, I can use a primer, but a lot of times I just don't. I'm kind of lazy that way. I'm just going to be honest. The mattes are beautiful and and I know I have like a, a whole stack here of like eyeshadow palettes but I also love this brand so much I have a ton of their like singles so for June I picked out nine singles to put in this little Sydney Grace magnetic palette um, and they're just like three different color stories but then on top of that like I'm ad addic addicted uh, the, the little gaps in here are the ones that are in that smaller palette, but I love these. Those are all of the metallic and the pressed pigments. And then I have these two palettes of mattes. I love this brand so much. There is a palette that's coming out this month. I don't know if it'll, it's already out or will soon be out. And I'm still deciding if I want to get it. I'm trying, remember I mentioned this already, I'm trying to make sure I'm not buying just to buy. I want to get stuff I'm actually going to use. And there's a couple shades in there that I'm not sure are for me, but I might need it. I might, I don't know. We'll see. But I love this brand. The minute I discovered this brand, courtesy of Mel Thompson years ago, I think it was 2018, I just couldn't stop buying. Couldn't stop buying. Next month, they're going to have their Christmas in July sale. And boy, am I ready. I'm already making a list. What do I have? Because I don't want to buy doubles. Um, what am I excited about? Um, is there anything that they have released that I don't have that I want? I always like to pick up a mystery bag. Love Sydney Grace. We're down now to the products that I just repurchase, repurchase, repurchase. Here's one of them. This is the Beauty Pie Super Luminous Under Eye Genius. I'd always been looking for something that's going to help take care of my dark circles. I love this so much. This is my second pot of it. When I hit the bottom, I ordered another one because I don't want to be without. I don't, so I have an unopened one waiting in one of my drawers because I refuse to be without this product. This is one of the few because I am so fair that I can put on, I've got a lot of like swatching going on here, but that it's close enough to my skin tone that I can tap it on that doesn't need me to put foundation or concealer over the top. And it can just neutralize some of the darkness right here in the tear trough so that I can on a day when I don't really want to put on a full face of makeup, kind of minimize the darkness and I'm out the door. A lot of other brands have under eye correctors that lean a little bit darker. They might be the same kind of tone, but a couple shades darker so that if I don't cover it up, I look like I have swatches of like pink or peach under my eye and that never does me any favors. But this is the only under eye corrector that I continue to come back to. I know NARS just came out with a new one. I was like, why? I know that Smashbox has the Becca under eye corrector. I was like, why? This one's like, what, $14, $15 and worth it every time. This is the One Powder Wonder from Beauty Pie and Uberlucent Universal. This, it, I know, it's frightening. It's white. You're like, wait, what? You put that on your face? Yes, I do. I love this. If you love the Pat McGrath under eye powder, the white one in this, are almost identical. You get twice as much or more product in here than the one in Pat McGrath. She's what, $32, $34. This is still under 20 and it's so good. I use it all over the face. The Pat McGrath one I save for just under the eye because I go through it like that. I do have one of the Pat McGrath ones, um, a backup of that, but the truth is I feel like I could very happily set my under eye, set my entire face with this. It's slightly radiant. It's a it's a baked formula. You see there's a, a little bit of glow there. And it doesn't always come off looking this white because the minute like you blend it in, it's right here. You, you can't see it. That's what I love about it. It's lightweight, it's traceless. You can keep applying and applying and applying and you're never gonna see this. The fact that I this is like my third one and I have a backup, I don't ever want to be without this. Here's another one that I've gone through. I can't even tell you how many compacts of the ambient lighting powder from Hourglass. This is the shade Diffuse Light. Look, I just hit the bottom. <laughs> it's gonna go quick from here on out, I know that. This is the shade Diffuse Light. I've been curious because when I first found this powder, what, 16, 15, 16 years ago, this was the lightest shade in Diffuse Light. They had a more peachy tone. They've expanded their shade range. I'm curious 
if I want to keep picking up diffuse light, it has a slight yellow lean to it. I think that works well for my skin. Or if I wanted to go for one that has less of a yellow lean and is a little bit lighter. I don't know. I don't want to look like I like Casper the ghost or, you know, Queen Elizabeth the first, like a, a, a ghostly pallor to me. But I love the slight reflectivity that this gives, uh, that candlelit glow. It sets my under eye, it sets my whole face. It's a great finishing powder. Love this. I've gone through countless of these and I always have one on hand. For somebody who has really wimpy eyelashes, I need the right mascara. I'm looking for drama. I'm looking for length. I'm looking for something that's not gonna smudge, it's gonna last all day. And this has probably been my most repurchased tube of mascara. I've always loved Lancome mascaras, but when this new formula debuted in 2017, I got a sample size of it. And when I burned through that, I repurchased. And I paid the full size price, which I think was $25 a tube for probably two years straight until it started going on sale. And then I started picking it up whenever it was on sale. And I always have a tube. I think I have three tubes in my backup jar, but it's Lancome's Mr. Big. This is the most beautiful mascara. It definitely has that fluffier sized wand. It gives me the drama. If, if I'm not careful and I keep coating, I can become a little spider lashy. I don't hate that. But this is everything I want and then when it dries, it's, it, it stays. I don't smudge, I don't smear. I love, 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 love so much that I couldn't tell you how many of these I've purchased. And the minute I'm buying a high-end luxury mascara, when it's full price, you know that's good. Now, the one that I have been loving recently, and I think this is like my seventh, maybe eighth tube of it, is this. This is from Hamish. This is a tubing mascara, and I think right now this is my, my favorite tubing mascara. This is the Smudge Stop Mascara. It has a curved wand to it. It doesn't have those silicone or rubber bristles. A lot of tubing mascaras have that. I like that this one has a, a more traditional mascara wand. Me and the curved wand don't always get along. Sometimes I get mascara on my lid where I don't need it, but this gives me length. This gives me volume. This gives me the ability to put some on here, put some on here and come back and add. Not all tubing formulas build after they're dry. That just sets you up for flakage underneath. And normally a tubing mascara will not flake, will not smudge, but the polymers in this are what make it fantastic. At the end of the day, a little bit of warm water and they just slide right off. Um, this takes like a balm cleanser and then um, a foaming cleanser and then sometimes, um, you know, a cotton round with micellar water to get the last remnants of it off. But they deliver very different looks, but I'm willing to repurchase, repurchase, repurchase. These are fantastic. This is my favorite liquid eyeliner. This is the Illustrative Liner from M. I think... Okay, I started purchasing this in 2021. I'd heard a lot about it. I was like, I don't wear eyeliner. And the reason I quit wearing eyeliner for about six years is it's doing it right now. It's leaking. My left eye leaks incessantly. And I couldn't find a formula, liquid or pencil, that wouldn't smudge, that didn't look like, you know, when it got mixed in with my tears, that it didn't look like I was crying sad little panda tears. I didn't want that. I didn't want to deal with it, so I quit wearing eyeliner for years. And I finally, finally, finally got one of these in a kit from M. They had a lipstick, a lip liner, and a mascara. And the minute I tried this, I have never been without. Never ever. So that's two and a half years now of every time this runs out, I repurchase. Um, I don't know if it was right or if it was wrong. It's a brush tip, by the way, which I love. Um, but I got my oldest kind of to fall in love with this. I gave her one of these and she has become like a master of winged eyeliner. She's way better than I am. She's a really artistic guy, but she's like, mom, I need another one. I'm like, well, they're $22. I said, I won't charge you shipping, but you need to learn to buy your own makeup. And that may sound harsh coming from me, but you have to learn to prioritize spending. And for me, it's not so much that I don't want to just give her one. It's that I want to help her learn how, how and where to budget and what's a priority and what's not. Um, and sometimes, you know, we'll buy a less expensive, more affordable option. But this is my ride or die. Ride or die. So good. This is the only liner that's in this, like, video. The only one I've purchased. And I've purchased it so many times. I like, and I don't ever want to be without of it. Like, there's two more just sitting right here waiting, waiting in the wings. So brows are one of those things that make a huge difference on my face. If I don't have my brows done, um, I have more hair to write about here and then very few hairs from here on out. I do use 
a brow serum to help get my eyebrows to grow so that I have a little bit more, but there, there's still like only so much a brow serum can do. I don't have the best brows. I don't over pluck them. I really try hard, but there are some duos like products, two products together that make all the difference for me. My favorite and most repurchased is this. This is from M Cosmetics or Microfluff Sculpting Brow Cream and their Fine Liner Brow Pencil. This is amazing because this pencil, it looks like a straight little line. It can be wide, but the minute you turn it on its side, it's not oval, it's not round, it's like a little dash mark. And it makes the most believable brow shaped marks in my eyebrow. Love this so much. And the shade Deep Taupe and Universal Taupe are the ones that work the best. I fell in love with this because this product here is got a teeny tiny spoolie. It has fibers in the product. And on top of that, the tint is just enough. The hold is just enough. My eyebrows don't feel crispy, but they stay where I put them all day long. This duo I love so much. I always, always, always have a backup. I don't want to be without. Thanks for watching today. Okay, I want to know what products are the ones when like you hit pan, you reorder. Uh, the ones that you buy over and over and over again. The ones that you don't even remember how many that you've gone through. Like, tell me what those are. And then if there's ones where you love the formula so much, like Lisa Aldridge lipsticks, that you just had to have more. Or um, like these blushes,